So back on site and just marked a place for the larva. We've actually moved it a little bit further forward because the the logs come quite a long way behind the building and the roof probably a little bit further so it's going to be a really long overhang at the back and we want some want that space back in here and it's oriented you can see the little blue spot there that's where the post is going to go that front post so that the view is straight out to the lake and I think he said he's going to take a few of those trees down to improve on this view still so now what we're doing is the the rocks we're going to arrange them following the template that I've just drew, draw, drawn we've already got one load of logs up here other log coming other load coming soon so the final build will be starting one of the main obstacles with this job is that ridiculously steep hill coming up here I don't think I would dare to drive that thing up that slope but he knows what he's doing So with this excavator having the ability to measure levels, uh, we're going to take advantage of that and check everything, see if we need to fine tune at all. So what we're going to do now is put the first round of logs on and the second round of logs so that we can make get all the, the shape of the building established and see if we need to do any fine tuning with these rocks. 
Now what's actually happened, effectively by accident, is that the, the back wall here is slightly lower than the front. But we've checked all the levels and, for instance, this front, this point and this point are the same. That point and that point are the same. That point and that point are the same. But the whole foundation is slightly slanted down to the back, which is great. I'm really happy about that. It emphasizes that whole theme that we've got going with this building, with everything sloping up to the front. That hill kills me every time. Whew. Okay, so we've got the first two rounds of logs on and that's kind of jiggled everything into the right place. Most of the marks are meeting up pretty well. I'll show you that in a minute. But what I'm now gonna do is drill through at least the bottom log and into the stone with this stone bit. Now what I would like to be able to do is to just drill straight the way down through the top log as well because that's holding everything in place. And in this case, I will be able to do that. I'll get a little bit into the stone and then I can take the logs off and continue the hole. But this wall, it's not going to do it. So I'm going to have to take these two logs off. I think the back wall will be okay as well. Yep. But with taking these off, I lose some of that stability in the structure. So I'm going to take a whole bunch of screws and screw down this log to that log. Same there and there and there to try and prevent anything moving as I take these logs off, these two. So I'll get going with that. By the way, the laser marks that I made are useless because as I've already said, this whole building is now slanting down a little bit towards the back evenly, which I'm happy about, but it means that the, those marking those laser lines was useless. But you never know what's going to happen. So I'm going to actually take advantage of the fact that I've drilled the holes in, in the, for the pegs. So for instance here, there's three holes in this log, but only two of them have got the mark, that pencil mark that I made. So I know the one that doesn't have a mark is the log that I drilled from the log above, all the way through that and then half the way through this log, or a little more than half. So I know that that hole, because there's no mark, doesn't go all the way through the log but I can take advantage of it. 
so I get a bit of a head start with the drilling. So I'll go straight down through there, through that log, and into the stone. And this is granite. I'm a little bit worried about how well this drilling is going to go, but we'll see. Okay. So that went really tough through the wood. I mean, it is a, a stone drill bit, but usually it goes through okay, but this was quite tough. But it went re reasonably well into the stone, which I'm surprised at. Don't want to overheat that drill bit going through the wood. I'll give it a break, take a break. Okay, unfortunately I think I'm going to go back down that hill and get a, a wood blade for the drill so I can go most of the way through with the wood blade because it's hard work with that, with the stone bit and it's heating the, heating the bit up quite a bit going through the wood. So all the way back down to the van and back up just for one blade. I tried to think of everything that I knew was going to need and bring it up with me, but it never works out that way. two or three centimeters into the stone at this stage. I'm gonna to have to lift these logs back off and then I'll drill the holes a bit deeper. But now I need to get rid of this log. What I'm going to do now, before I take these logs off, is I'm actually going to draw that whole horizontal groove line. And the reason for that, did my pencil just break? No. Nope. Is that once I get the, the threaded rod down into those holes with some glue, then I'm going to have to, for instance here, I'm going to have to carve a little piece of, of wood away from the top of here so that the bolt and the washer sit below the surface here. And when I've got two lines on there, I can see the area that's covered where that's not going to show. I should have done it on these two logs as well, but I forgot. But at least I've remembered for these ones.
So those holes in the stones, I'm gonna half fill them with glue and it's a strong epoxy resin type glue. It's, I've used it before, it's really, really strong. It takes about 40 minutes to set, but about three hours to cure properly, which is a bit of a shame. It means that's pretty much all I'm gonna be able to get done today. Um, what I will do before I apply the glue, and by the way, I don't have the applicator for this. There must be some special kind of applicator gun, but I don't have it. So what I have done in the past is I have to use two of these two of these at the same time to squeeze this through. So it takes quite a bit of pressure. Anyway, you can imagine what I mean. It takes a bit of pressure, quite a lot of pressure because it has this ridiculously long mixing spout, which you attach in here and it has to push it all the way through there and it gets the two different materials get mixed together or it goes through that thing. But it takes a bit of pressure, so I have to use these. But anyway, something I need to do before I can put the glue in. So I'd appreciate it if someone would tell me what this stuff is called in English. Here it's called terra, which means tar, and it's understood. It's like pine tar is what it's made of. Pine sap. I guess it's boiled down. The way they used to make it was they would make a huge pile of small to medium size lengths of pine and then cover it with sod, with turf, light a fire in the middle and let it burn really, really slowly. This is all done in an area where they dug a pit so the sap boils out of the tree into the pit and then runs out and gets collected over days as it gradually very very slowly burns but what is this stuff in english it's brilliant stuff if someone could let me know i'd appreciate it So, that's all I can get done today. This glue takes, it sets in 45 minutes, but it takes three hours to properly cure, and it's gonna to have to be cured before I start screwing bolts onto this. But that's anchored the thing down. I'm not sure if it was even necessary, but it's done anyway. And I'll come back tomorrow. I'm gonna to get some stuff to dilute that pine tar with make it a bit easier to brush on get it to sink in a bit more but 
that's it for today it's cold beer time <laughs>